Well, hello again, and as you can probably see, there's a, an almost completed model here. It looks like I've done a huge amount since the last uh, video, but in fact I haven't. Uh, all the steps are very straightforward. A couple of things I'll just point out to you though. Um, mostly stuff that can be sorted without any problem at all. First of all, on page 66, um, this is showing the location of the wiring for the lights and where it says LA and LB here, the wire disappears through a hole, never to be seen again. Should actually be a blue wire being shown between there and this control box, which is... Um, where it needs to be. Pretty obvious really, you're putting all the other wires through into the control box, so you just put that one as well. On page 75, 75, yeah, we have got a rather complicated diagram showing the wiring for the 805. Um, and it's showing the last few bits to be put into place, which are the wires for the rotate and elevate of the missiles um, so what we see is uh, m3 m4 and m7 in the middle of the picture um, uh, m3 and m4 will be the two wires which come from uh, the turntable down here on which are going to connect to the actuators for the elevation and M7 is going to be the short wire which comes from the turntable itself. Now these are M3 and M4 are indistinguishable they both come out of the uh, both come out of the turntable from the slip ring and they go along and they're fed into the uh, control box and they be plugged into sockets M3 and M4 um, which you might think would be identical certainly I did and uh, most people do um, there's a little note here on the side and it says M3 is four wires M4 is two wires. Now, as far as I can see, it's M3 is three wires, not four wires. And M4 is two wires. And they plug into sockets marked quite clearly M3 and M4. If you plug those in the wrong way round, and the only way you'll know is by looking at the tiny little connectors on the end and looking for the little red wire if you plug them in the wrong way around you will damage the circuit board um, they put this you know just on a little side piece at the bottom of the page uh, it doesn't look as though it's terribly important but it is um, do not put them the wrong way around otherwise you will damage the circuit board and you will have to get a new one so that's an important uh, thing to watch out for. That's the wires M3 and M4 referenced on page 75. Make sure you get those the right way around. As you can see from the inside of my chassis, it's a right rat's nest of uh, cables. And they all disappear through one very tiny hole. I don't even know if I can show you. No. It's down there and it comes through into this box where the control panel is. And it makes for a very, very closely packed bunch of wires coming through a small hole. Um, as a result of that, I wasn't able to put the circuit board dead flat and I had to position it leaning forward slightly, but uh, no problem. 
Now just a little bit about the radio control. If you're using the uh, little handheld remote that they uh, include in the kit, then it shows you taking a power supply, connecting that power supply to the AEC, which is the little red unit that you get, and then taking a wire cable from that goes then to the circuit board and then comes back and connects to the small receiver. Um, this works fine. It will also work the other way around if you swatch if you switch this plug with this plug, absolutely no difference. They are completely interchangeable because obviously there's the the black, the red and the white in both plugs so you can change them around just means that you can get to put this in the middle of the uh, in the uh, middle of the wire between there and there as opposed to having to have it very close to the circuit board um, the only real advantage of doing that is because if you want to at some point in the future control this from your uh, 802 or 801 controller, um, which is the 8-channel controller, you can actually do it very, very easily. Um, I'll just show you how easy it is. Let me just uh, move this out of the way. This is the 8-channel receiver, which you can get from... Uh, Obviously from uh, <clears throat> wherever you got your model from. You can get it from Banggood, you can get it from AliExpress. Um, very cheap. Um, just a little tiny receiver, truss bed, 8C. Now the great thing is that this will substitute immediately for the little remote control that came with the kit. So let's just substitute it and I'll show you what happens. And there we go. All you do is you unplug the little receiver and then you plug that plug into where it says POW on the truss bed receiver. Um, making sure you've got it lined rightly. The signal is nearest to the label. Signal power and ground that's all you need to do because you've already got the power coming from the BEC the other end of this is attached up to your control panel already so all you've done basically is exchange one receiver for another um, now the advantage of this is that it saves you having to run a cable from the control panel up to the front of the trailer and then run that cable along your 801 and connect it into the receiver on your 801. Um, it also means that once your 801 is disconnected and drives away you can still operate the missiles which I think you probably want to do. So for the sake of a few quid um, it's a really nice uh, really nice solution and I can uh, thoroughly recommend it. The other thing it gives you, which I don't know if it's a benefit or not, is it gives you four independent switches to control your legs. So you can control front and rear and uh, left and right all separately. Um, the downside is you don't have a control that does all four, all four at the same time. So if you want to do all four at the same time, then I suggest you stick with the uh, little handheld remote um, because that allows you to do it. The bonus on the uh, other system is that you actually use the right hand stick on your transmitter to move your uh, missiles up and down and left and right, which is really intuitive. Um, and then you have four of the switches which uh, will put your legs up and down and will allow for uh, uneven surfaces 
So there we go. Um, any questions, just drop me a line in the uh, comments below and I'll, uh, I'll try and sort it out for you. While we're on the subject of changing the receivers, um, the BEC that comes supplied with the kit um, doesn't actually have heat shrink tubing going all the way down it because obviously you've got to plug the wire into it. But having plugged the wire into it, you're then left with bare terminals and you're then going to put it into this and put it into this box which has got your receiver with exposed um, wiring. So I think it's probably a good idea to put some uh, heat shrink on that once you've connected the plug. And if you have any problems um, with that, again, give me a yell. And this little receiver fits beautifully just in at the end of the just in at the end of the unit. So everything fits inside perfectly. Or will do when I close the lid. There we go. I just needed more hands. That was all. Right, well I'm about to um, put on the base piece. Um, it doesn't fit quite as well as it should because unfortunately they show these wires here going underneath this and the same at the back the wires going underneath. But of course unless you cut off the um, unless you cut off the plugs on the end of the wires and solder them back on again afterwards uh, they won't go underneath because you've already constructed everything and uh, there's not enough distance between the beam and the plate to get the uh, plugs underneath. So the plate that goes on the bottom will actually sit on top of these cables so they'll be slightly proud but it does fit well enough and certainly won't be too much of a problem. Well, I hope you can guess what this means. There are two virtually empty boxes. Just a tiny little fire extinguisher and a little bit of chain left over, which I haven't got around to fitting yet. But that means the beast is nearly done. And she is a beast. Quite huge. One or two things we'll just talk about. Uh, first thing, at the front you have these posts which are going to have chain looped between them. Uh, and they supply you with some very tiny little screws, as you can see there to go into the pre-drilled holes on these posts. Well, I managed to get two of those screws about halfway in and then they just stripped their own thread and it took me about half an hour to do those two. So I resolved not to uh, continue with that. And what I have discovered is if you take a dressmaker's pin that you will in fact get a quite a neat finish just by placing a pin through the hole. Just trying to grab one now with my other hand and just pop one of those through if I can get it through there and you'll see that that will Get it to focus. Come on, focus. There we go. That will actually hold a chain in place. So I'm just going to use that with a bit of glue. Um, and it will do the job exactly the same as those little screws. Uh, another thing that uh, I need to talk to you about. A little eight-channel receiver that I mentioned uh, would substitute for the micro receiver that they include in the kit and enable you to control this from your um, truss bed uh, radio control as opposed to trying to hold one of those buttons down on the 
mini receiver for two minutes while everything happens. Um, doesn't appear to be available anymore. I have had a good look for it and I can't find it at the moment on the internet. And it appears to have been replaced by a uh, 16 channel uh, receiver. Um, which is no more expensive, but I don't know whether or not it will have the um, necessary output to operate this unit. Um, one of the other guys, um, Peter, who's building this uh, kit also, has um, uh, ordered a 16 channel receiver, so we'll find out when his arrives and hopefully we can update you then, um, just to let you know that. Um, the other thing, batteries. Now, I've got myself a little um, 1000 watt LiPo, um, which is small enough to go in this box. It's a very tiny box that they've given you to put the uh, battery in. Um, very small. And what I've done is I've put the battery connector up through the hole in that box, through the hole into this box, and inside this box I've put a little uh, on-off switch. Uh, that's from um, Sky RC, and it's uh, I think about ten pounds. And what that will do is that will uh, do the cutoff for you when your lipo is discharged, because I don't think the model will do that for you automatically. Um, it may do. We don't know. There's no real way of finding out. It doesn't tell us anywhere. Um, so I put that in and. So obviously we can just slot that into the uh, little container down there and can pop in nicely into that and allow us to close the door and neaten it all up. Uh, another thing to mention, a um, little problem that we had, um, was with this strut here that connects from the end of the antenna down to a fixed point on the uh, turntable. And the idea of this is that so you um, raise the missiles upwards to about a 45 degree angle and this uh, long antenna goes vertical and they advise you to put a sc screwdriver in this little hole here and turn it to adjust the angle. Unfortunately, even though I've turned it to be the shortest possible length that means two things one it doesn't quite go vertical and two it doesn't quite settle down into its uh, into its um, rest and if you don't do what I've done to it it will sit at something like that angle um, solution for this was to loosen off this clamp here and as you can see it doesn't seem to be quite as tidy as it was before and what I've done is unscrewed this to pull it back slightly this way move this clamp probably a quarter of an inch in that direction and tightened it up again uh, and that has meant that a it goes vertical and b it goes down into its rest when you uh, put it down just a little <clears throat> little tip there if you want to uh, try and sort that out I'll just do a little demo for you of the um, legs operating and show you which switches do what on the remote. Um, like I said, um, using the uh, transmitter that came with the 801. So we'll just uh, power on the model. power on the receiver the transmitter rather and what should happen is we should get some flashing lights right so we know we've got connection now um, on the transmitter this button right at the very left hand end will stick on some little red lights to go with the yellow ones quite why they've got that separate I don't know but it's there um, I understand if you take the supplied um, signal control line, which I haven't used, and you run it up to your um, 801 and plug that into your 801, that you will get um, 
indicators operating if you've if you've got them working on your 801. Um, personally, I can't stand indicators on little models uh, just operating at anything other than a, a pretend traffic circuit. Um, when you're driving through the woods, you're, in my opinion, unlikely to keep putting your indicators on, so uh, I always make sure they're disabled. Right, let's have a look. Um, okay, the raise and lower of the missiles is on this stick, so... I won't raise it all the way up on film because it'll take too long. Um, you've also got the rotate on here as well. Um, one thing you should be aware of is the fact that you do have to take this out, this piece out, um, in order to allow it to do a full 360 uh, when it's elevated. Otherwise, the uh, the back end will hit onto it. Um, let's show you these legs anyway. All right. So the rear legs are here, and I had to reverse the connections onto these switches to make it work in the right direction. Um, so if we put those down, we set the rear legs in motion. Front legs are here, and we can do the same with those. Push them down. To operate so front left front right rear left rear right and uh, as we've seen before they take an inordinate length of time to uh, get down to the ground they are moving and we'll get there eventually one of the things that they've done with this model is in order to make sure these wheels in order to make sure these wheels here um, lift off the ground they've uh, had to reduce the amount of uh, play in the suspension It's important now you've got four little switches to turn off there. So one of the problems there is um, because they've got these wheels to lift off the ground, um, which is lovely, um, they've had to restrict the amount of travel on the suspension. And if you want to increase the amount of suspension on those wheels, you can turn the adjusters that's on them, um, but you may not lift the wheel completely off the ground. Um, not terribly worried about that and I think it's probably better to have the extra suspension um, yeah so I've just got to do that bit of chain on the front uh, and then uh, make it all look a bit more realistic maybe get rid of the black on these uh, actuators that uh, shows up um, hide these connectors just do a little bit of cosmetic work on it and then the uh, yeah the big elephant in the room is these legs at the front. So you have a cab unit, you have a tractor unit, which you can operate the fifth wheel using your radio. But in order to get these legs to come down, you have to pull these little tags here to lower the legs and if you don't do that obviously when you separate the tractor unit off the front will crash on the ground um, so although you've got you've got the opposite the facility to connect and disconnect the fifth wheel you've got no method of lowering or raising those without uh, getting down on your knees and uh, pulling them down manually so my next step is probably going to be to automate those and uh, try and get those electrically operated but we shall see how we get on with that. 
I will let you know. In the meantime, um, it's very, very nearly there, so I'm going to post this video. Um, and uh, we'll, um, we'll look forward to uh, finishing this off and getting outside and doing a bit of, uh, a bit of trucking through the forest. Let's see how we get on with it. Um, this does take a long time to raise, uh, but considering the weight of these missile tubes, which is, the missile tubes themselves are heavier than the rest of the chassis. So it's, it's performing quite a, uh, quite a major feat lifting these up. So this white goes up quite slowly. Um, but hey, can't really complain about that. I think altogether this is a huge piece of work and rather lovely. You can see now that the aerial is, uh, the big antenna is going up to a vertical position while the uh, tubes are going to up to about 45 degrees. And if I've got it right, that antenna should go very nearly vertical. Um, uh, It'd probably be better to put this on a switch as well rather than on a, a, a joystick. There we go. And I think that's uh, that's pretty near vertical. It's uh, pretty near. Right there she is, the beast in all her glory. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. And. Uh, Like I say, a few little bits and pieces to do, and then we'll take her out and run her. Okay, thanks for watching.